Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's not home from work yet, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Friday. TGIF indeed. This has been a long, this is my first full week back, week back after um, we took a little, uh, little time off when uh, Mark was um, off for his birthday. So this was the first full week back at work, and it felt every minute of it. It felt every minute of it. So I'm very glad to be here. Very glad to be with y'all. I hope you're doing well. Look after yourselves. Look after each other in these increasingly interesting times in which we live. Um, and we're doing a Friday story time. Sort of story time. Pretty much a story time. Um, we had gotten a few requests. They come a lot of times via email or DM um, with some mental health questions or just mental health, uh, wanting to share hard stuff that's going on in their life related to mental health. And don't even really ask for, um, specific questions or specific insight. Just want to be heard. Just want maybe some support, want some acknowledgement for the, the hard time they're having, or want someone to celebrate with when something good's going on. You know, it's not all gloom and doom in between, you know, side effects. We do have good lives time to time. Uh, so what I wanted to do today is do kind of a, you know, ask me, ask you sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to check in, tell you how I'm doing. This is similar, though not the same, to what I would do if I was working with a group of individuals who had mental health concerns. Why is it not the same? Because this is YouTube and I'm not at work, okay? Um, and I'm not acting in a professional capacity here and I would encourage any of you not to try to do the same. What I would encourage you to do is act as a peer, you know, I would see anyone in the comment section as a peer. And just to provide a space to say how you're doing. Dear Journal, and leave a comment below here. You don't have to respond to anyone's comments. You don't have to um, go into a ton of details if you don't want to. If you're having a great day, write, I'm having a great day, cap, 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 you know, or something similar. Uh, just have a place for people to be heard. I think it's important. I think most people who are frustrated or agitated, I was doing a mental health first aid training, um, middle of last week, which is always fun. It's eight hours. I so appreciate teachers, among other professionals, but specifically teachers, because eight hours on your feet is a lot. It's a whole lot, and they do it every day. I don't care if you get summers off. I would want more than summer off if I was doing that. So some of these things were a little fresh in my mind from doing that training, and I forget that people have stories they want to tell and have things they want to say. So I'll start, for my part, with doing where I'm at and how things have been with my mental health. Mine kind of runs underneath Mark's discussions with addiction and things like that. Obviously, I've talked a little more about it. Um, and some of you guys are more in the loop, and we have some new subscribers, so hello, everybody. I probably only usually see you on a Saturday for the, the Chantal dirt, but we, we do have a rest of the week to fill. Um, where I'm at today, I, if you hadn't seen, haven't had a good night's sleep in about three weeks or so. Um, about four weeks ago, I was put on a round of steroids, just nine days worth, to try to see if they could, um, alleviate some pain. I'm having some lower right back pain and a little bit down to the knee, so like sciatica, something like that. I was also having some twitching and jerking in my arms and in my legs. So the regular doctor orders the steroids. The twitching stops, the pain doesn't, the steroids stop, that, okay, that's my physical health. I'm dealing with that. It's not painful. There's nothing escalating with testing. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just the process and the bureaucracy of getting the help you need by going through one pro to another to another is frustrating. But I'm not, like, suffering here. So don't cry for me, Argentina. But the round of steroids really threw me for a loop. Um, I thought I'd be fine because it's not that much. It does say if you have a history of bipolar disorder to talk to your doctor first. My doctor didn't mention it to me. My GP didn't mention it to me. At, let me be fair. The PA, because my GP is awesome and he's very, very cute. He's Mark's too. Um, she didn't mention it at all. Now, I knew better, but I thought, I got this. I'm in recovery. I can roll with the punches. If you've been watching for a few years, you know most of the time I can roll with the punches and then sometimes I just completely fall apart. Okay, so I was banking on that I was going to be okay. The crying jags, like four days of crying jags. Couldn't sleep. And I was crying over nothing. And I kind of had perspective on the fact that I was crying because I knew it must have been the steroids happening. So I was like, take a step back from myself and say, why am I crying over the news? Well, I mean, I 
obviously. But, I mean, why am I crying thinking about Bandit dying in three years? Why am I crying about us not having food in the fridge? You know, we're both employed, and YouTube at this point is pretty much like a part-time job for both of us if you're going to talk about income. Um, it's more like entrepreneur's hours. You do it like five to nine, <laughs> pretty much. But, um, you know, there's other things, um, other things going on. And I am stuck in thoughts of, what if I lose this? What if I lose that? What if I lose this? What if I lose that? And I was getting very upset. But behind that was me going, you dumbass, <laughs> it's just the medicine talking. And then it stopped feeling like just the medicine talking, and it all merged. And then it was all just one single internal monologue. I'm not hearing voices. Nothing is separate. It's not someone else. I'm not audio hearing things. It's just my internal monologue all of a sudden became that dark, too, as the meds came off. And talked to my doctor, of course my psychiatrist, because <laughs> little did I know um, she would have opinions about it. And we talked. And she had said the steroids probably kicked up a little bit of a hypomanic episode, which I have bipolar one with a few psychotic features for anybody who's not familiar. Uh, bipolar is a mood disorder mixed with highs, lows of varying degrees of severity over varying periods of time. Um, there's more specifics, but we'll just leave it there for now. Hypomania is more mild than mania in some ways. It tends to be when you think of the happy mania. Spending more drinks, more appetizers. Who wants to go to Atlantic City? You know, it's Tuesday at two in the afternoon. Let's go to the, let's go play the slots, you know? Stuff like that. So I was kind of in that space, but not all the great feelings about it, just the energy levels. I can't sleep. I go to bed, we have our dinner, which my shrink yelled at me about too, because she says I'm not digesting my meds correctly because of the way in which I eat. Eat, take my bedtime stuff too. And I don't get any of the good stuff because I have a history of substance use disorder. So I'm only getting like things that are prescribed off label in every direction to try to knock me out. And they've worked for years, but in this period now, I cannot sleep. I can just not sleep. Um, so I go to bed, eat, lay there for 10, 15 minutes, give Mark a hug, and then come sit on the couch, watch a little more TV, some more YouTube. Um, interestingly, Foodie Beauty is on almost every... She's on, like, infomercials. At, like, 4 in the morning, she's on, making bad TV. <sighs> Makes me miss, like, Ron Popeil <laughs> and his infomercials. That's a lot more interesting, usually, at 4 in the morning. Um... And I sit out here, and then when he gets up for work, I usually have another couple hours before I have to get up for work. So I'll go back to the bed and sleep so that he can have his time out here without me sprawled on the couch. He can have his spot on the couch where he has his coffee, and Bandit sits over here. Mark likes a morning routine. He needs a morning routine because he's not a morning person, so I can't be out here during that. So I go back to bed. But it's catching up and catching up. I was so fatigued yesterday. Not even tired, because last night, on the couch again. But I was so fatigued. Like, I couldn't get up and move. I couldn't get up and do anything. You know, I was doing the basics, got my meds together, made the coffee for the next day. Um, I did make dinner. Um, we had some of the factor stuff. We still have a few of those meals left. They've all been good, but they have... Crunching the numbers, it's pricey. It's pricey. The food's good. I mean, I can't argue with that. But is it that good? No. <laughs> Not everything is. One of the meals was fantastic. The other was okay. If they were all exceptionally delicious and you found them that way, fine. Get them. But my appetite's waning. It's going up and down. I'm either eating a ton or I'm eating nothing at all. So I'm sort of maintaining but gaining a little weight, which is not what I wish I would be doing right now. Talk to my shrink over the phone. And she tells me, you're probably not metabolizing your medications correctly because you should be leaving a two-hour window before you go to bed where you eat. So I have to take my meds, one of which is the antipsychotic, which has to be taken with food. I've tried out without food, and I threw it right back up. So, you know, that's probably really inert, right? So I took it with some food. I usually have it with dinner. And I take my nighttime meds at the same time. I take, like, melatonin and a straw, like, nothing, nothing crazy. And then try to go to bed on that. No, she says, eat two hours before that. And then, when your stomach's empty, take the other one so I don't miss the window of falling asleep. Okay. So it worked for me for six years. 
and now suddenly it's it doesn't i mean ev it wor everything works till it doesn't i mean that's fair but there was like no you know warning signs i wasn't like getting up in the middle of the night a bunch of times i, I just couldn't fall asleep i could stay asleep but that's from like three to seven you know it's not good for someone in my condition uh with my con not in my condition look how bad it is um Someone with bipolar disorder to fuck with their sleep. It's not a good idea. It needs to be addressed. She also says, everyone's going to blame this twitch, tremor, and shake thing on my meds. She said the doctors are going to because they're not going to want to pursue it beyond, you know, that. Beyond just maybe doing an MRI or something. She's like, you'll see a neurologist. The neurologist will say it's your medication. And I'm like, well, huh. But what if it is? Well, if it is the outcome is I have to try to change. It's going to be my antipsychotic medication. Now, the last time we did that was when, what was it, 2014? And um, that's when we got Bandit. And that's when I bought a car at a 14% interest rate, financed out five years. <laughs> it was a big mistake. I picked it out in 20 minutes because I was lit as hell because I was teetering towards psychosis pretty much, between them coming off the one med and going on to the other, and I came off the one way too fast and went on to the other way too fast, and it was not okay. It ended up with some self-injury at the end of it, um, a trip to the hospital. I wasn't admitted, but I was assessed, and, you know, I went home afterwards. Um, the dude in the ER was like, you know, at my whim, I could have you involuntarily committed. I'm like, do you know what I do for a living? Get the fuck out of here. Don't scare people with Treatment. Treatment's supposed to help. It's not supposed to be a punishment, for God's sake. And get another job. You've been doing this for 30 years. So, I did have periods where I needed treatment along the way. And that was the, aside from having to go to the hospital in the beginning of 2020, before COVID started, about a month before COVID started, um, and things shut down up here, I was in the hospital. So, there's been, like, blips along the way. Um, aside from that, I've been fine, but a changing a medication that powerful antipsychotics are pretty powerful medications changing it is a scary prospect it's a very scary prospect because what if that happens again and i don't really have like i would have to take like intermittent fmla time because what who knows what could happen i mean if i end up needing two weeks off i mean if i can't sleep for a week or, or if i have a bad reaction and it, go, it gets worse you know, switch to one med. This one doesn't make you fat, but it makes you shake. This one makes you fat, but it doesn't make you shake. This one's really old, and you'll eventually start drooling. I already take one that gives me dry mouth and one that makes me drool. And you think it would even out, right? No. I get dry all over here, coffee stains, things stuck to my teeth. Obviously, I brush my teeth. But my mouth gets dry, and it all sticks, and I tend to drink brown liquids for whatever, except the water. This, you know, water's clear, but... And those side effects get embarrassing to me. I'm always really self-conscious of it, especially before I film. And between side effects from meds, not sleeping, not kind of knowing what's going on, the twitching, which no one thinks they're responsible to treat. It's nobody's fault. It's probably just been something that's happening. Uh, there's pressure somewhere, whatever. Oh, my neurologist appointment is next April. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not. Next what is it? August? Maybe? Something like that? Um, because there's, I mean, when Mark had his issues, Mark was going blind in one eye and could barely move. And for him to see a neurologist took seven months. I mean, he had to live like that. So I have to wait and see. And if it gets weird or worse in the middle, you know, get that addressed. It wouldn't be a priority issue because our hospitals are full with COVID patients at the moment. Moment. Um, there's not enough room even the rural hospitals where you would usually go out of Scranton to get services because they're usually not as busy. They're the hospitals that are jammed because those are the service areas where people are getting sick. I mean, obviously in Scranton, people are getting sick too. The hot, the ERs don't look hot. There's long lines because there's nowhere to put people and they're running out of ICU beds and you know, it's happening everywhere. It's playing out here differently because Scranton center it, didn't, it seemed like most people were vaccinated, but then when you go into the rural counties, it, there wasn't that many cases, but now a lot of people are getting sick. So add the fact that not just me, but you and everyone else, if you live, if you're watching, if you live in the world, we've all, 
It's like, oh, I have to work. I have to this. I have to that. We're all trying to do this on the umbrella of a global pandemic. I know, I know. But if it goes on for a year and a half, it's just a way of life. This is nothing we should have to get used to. We're resilient. Human beings are resilient. Um, but this shouldn't be our new normal. It shouldn't be that, you know, like two thirds of the people care and another third doesn't. And we're all at the mercy of people who don't care about how other people are doing. That kind of floored me. That made me cry a little bit when the crying jags were happening. I'm like, some people just don't care about anybody else but themselves. That shouldn't be a political position. If you think that it is, I don't know what to tell you. Kindness shouldn't be political. Thoughtfulness shouldn't be political. Um, I'll leave that there. So going forward, I don't, I don't know exactly. Um, today is Friday. I feel okay on a Friday. It is Uber Eats night, which is good. I got paid on Wednesday. The bills are paid already, so now I know how much money is left. So Uber Eats is in the budget this week, which is nice. Um, and then we'll finish off the rest of that factor stuff. And we'll, and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, I don't know. I don't know about ordering it again. I don't know. It's nice to have something to just throw in the oven. But sometimes, I, or microwave, excuse me. Um, but I like to cook, too. Cooking, to me, is therapeutic. Uh, you know, talking with Mark is therapeutic. And since I'm mostly home, and I do video or phone appointments at my mental health provider, it's, you know, I have Mark. I have the videos that I make. I have something, a creative outlet. Um, to the extent that we have a comment section, or you can reach us by DM and email, there's feedback going on. It's always a chance to meet some new people when we have new viewers, and to... Um, follow up with uh, friendships and acquaintanceships that we've made with folks over the now years we've had a channel. Um, so having the channel was helpful too. It's also a reason to get up off your ass, <laughs> put the sets together, think about something for at least 20 minutes, and put out a video. So I thought checking in today with where mental health is at for me would be where I'm at. I imagine going forward, I will probably still have trouble sleeping for a little while. I've been in recovery for about nine years or so, mental health and drug and alcohol. And um, there's been blips on the radar, obviously. It's not been a steady remission. It's a lot more fluid than it is static. But from feeling this way before, it's going to probably go up and down, up and down, up and down, and brrr, like snapping a rubber band. You know, it's going to go like that, and then it'll even out. Or I sometimes explain it like two moods. It's like radio stations, if you have the dial on your old radio station, if you're a thousand years old and have that kind of car, um, and the dial moves. It's like, here's a clear radio station, and here's one, and my mood is in the middle, and it's all fuzzy. So to go from here to here, I have to go through this part, which is all fuzzy and noisy and loud. And then I'll eventually land at my next place of stability, whatever that looks like for however long. I used to be able to chart my moods really well, and a mood chart is a great tool to use. I used it for the first few years. I found when I changed medications, my moods got all off. Dependably, you could find me in a facility in either April or September. I met Mark in the end of September of 2010 in um, rehab. T September 2009, um, I was still in jail. September 2008, I had my second DUI. September 2011, I was probably still drunk. September 2012, I had just gotten out of my sixth rehab and contracted pneumonia to the point where I coughed myself into two broken ribs. So September's hold on to some moments. So does November. There was very few months out of the year I wasn't ill with either mental health, drug and alcohol use, or something of the kind. So it's hard not to dwell on the past, but when people would talk about, like, you know, like my 20th high school reunion came and went and nobody planned it, not because of COVID, nobody cared. Um, so that that didn't really come together. Uh, but there's no real, um, sorry, I had to take a cigarette break. Um, so yeah, I have, I don't have many like fond memories of like my 20s, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I gave those up to uh, drinking for the most part. So it was hard for me. At my 10 year reunion, people did get together, but at the time I thought, what the hell do I have to show for myself? I really didn't have anything. I had a little bit of clean time, 
which was not much at the time, and which I then gave away, and nothing else, really. So I didn't want to go. I felt like there was, I had nothing to say for myself. So I didn't, I didn't go. Um, now would I go? No. <laughs> I still wouldn't go. I don't really miss anybody. I had a couple good friends, and I can talk to them on Facebook. You know, and um, you can find anybody. We're all of the age where we're Facebook people. Maybe one or two of our people are trying to, you know, scoot over to TikTok, but not so much. Not so much me. I'm a little old for TikTok, I think. If you have the hairline that I have, you're way too old to be on TikTok. Just putting it out there. Give it two weeks and Mark will be want to be on TikTok, and then I'll be telling you, check us out on TikTok at blah, 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 smokeyzeromark.com. Well, anyway, I hope that checks you in with me. I'm... Doing, I'm managing, and managing is good. Managing is not hang in there. Managing is not things will look better. Managing is good. Managing is living. Everyone has something. I have mental health stuff. Maybe if you're watching this, you do too, because I probably put mental health on the, on the thumbnail. Um, people have families. They have jobs. They have money issues. They have housing issues. They have poverty. They have kids. They have sick parents. They have um, issues in their community. They have to deal with uh, racism and homophobia and quality housing, and health care, and um, deaths of family members, and mental illness, and substance use disorders, and family members who don't understand, and, 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 and. And there's a lot for all of us to deal with in our own ways. Managing is succeeding, I would say. Is it thriving? It's hard to thrive when you're having some challenges. You know, I've had some really good periods of thriving when I was doing well. But um, managing, and getting through the day, and making sure all my tasks are done, that's fine by me. That's just fine. I can, I can live with that. Not every day has to be a stellar, ecstatic, exciting day. You know, good is good. Good is good. And there's more good days coming. Probably bad, but the hell, they're going to come whether I predict them or not. They're going to come regardless, probably. So I can plan for them and just enjoy the nice ones in the middle, I guess. So that's my happy wrap it up thought. <laughs> So again, I encourage you, if you have anything on your mind, anything you want to just get off your chest, um, I would encourage, you know, peer-to-peer -peer feedback. Um, I'm not good at advice giving exactly. I know what works for me and what I've seen work for some other folks I work with. But again, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, I've just seen some life. And for other folks who are going through something, maybe I've done something you've done. But if you find yourself in the section below and you see people who are struggling in a way that maybe you have, maybe you can point some direction for them if you have shared the similar experience. That's at the core of really what I do. I'm a peer specialist. And at the core of that is you have lived experience and you work with other people on some level because you're more qualified. You've lived through what they're going through now. And you can maybe point out some potholes to them that you stepped in so they won't. Um, it's a good line of work. It's something I like to do. And it keeps it very green for me. Because I'm only a few bad decisions away from going on a run. Like a Thelma and Louise kind of run. And I'll just drag Mark with me. We'll see. I don't know who I'd be, though. I don't know if I'd be like Thelma or Louise. We'll see. At any rate, happy Friday once again. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the notification bell on your way out so when we have new videos, you'll get alerts and you'll also know when we go live. You can follow us on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and our contact information is all listed below as well. Thank you again and I will catch up with you tomorrow for some coffee talk about One Miss Foodie Beauty. <sighs> Words fail me. They won't tomorrow though. So thanks for watching, and we will see you then. Bye!